Welcome to the Bath, Fizz, and Foam YouTube channel. My name is Robin French-Smith, and today we're going to talk about the Supermoon Molds Jack-O-Lantern Mold. That's repeating myself, but whatever. The Supermoon Molds Jack-O-Lantern Mold is a hybrid mold. I have a couple of hybrid molds lined up for you guys over the next few weeks, so I hope that you kind of get a good look at them and see if you like them. Hybrid molds are kind of a blend between a traditional vacuum form mold and a 3D printed bath bomb mold. So they're very useful. They're very good for people who are just trying to kind of learn how to use a 3D printed mold or are kind of scared of the 3D printed molds that have multiple pieces. So this is a good solution for you guys. Um, today, I am making this extremely bright orange bath bomb mix and I <laughs> might have added too much color to it I don't know it's it is like hunter orange though like you're not going to get lost in the woods and accidentally get shot because someone's thinking that you're a deer if you're where if you got this color on so that's why I just called it like hunter orange um, anyway, so I have my mix there. This is Robin's low humidity bath bomb recipe. And um, I had it there working it because my humidity was low. I did add a little bit of extra oil to it because when I did my drop test, as you could see, um, my little drop test piece broke. So it's always a good idea to do a drop test, even though I'm know that this is a good recipe this low humidity recipe is a good one i've used it many times before it's um it's one of the reasons number one why it's a good idea to add your binder just a little bit at a time and then if you ever have issues where you feel like the mix is just a little too dry go for oil not water it's uh usually a much better solution so as you can see, I sprinkled mix into the mold and then I used two fingers to kind of lightly tap the details down. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to pack the mold so that I get the details, but I don't want to pack it super tight so that it's hard to get the bath bomb out of the mold later. Um, I know that these single molds can kind of feel daunting and scary. So if I packed it too tight, if I packed that first layer too tight, I run the risk of it separating from the rest of the bath bomb. But if I keep it light and fluffy, you just kind of pack it with a couple fingers down so I get those details nice and crisp. That tends to work really well. I added some embeds and now I am trimming off the excess that uh, keeps that back from being even and flat. And when I switch the camera angle, I will show you um, how I why I'm doing that. I'll, sh I'll give you a kind of like a little glimpse as to why I'm doing that. Use a spoon, your favorite whacking spoon, and give the mold a few taps. If it feels like it's sticking, you can always tap as you're lightly lifting up. I didn't feel like that was necessary for this mold, but I do have some that are a little bit more difficult. And so if I run across a problem like that, then yeah, I will kind of give it some light taps as I lift up. So that's always a good idea. Once again, I am lightly filling the mold in and just kind of light, just gently tapping the details in. I don't want to pack it really hard. Um, and even honestly, when I'm filling it up all the way, uh, you're going to see that I'm not really shoving the mix in there. I'm sprinkling it on top, mounding it up into a big pile of bath bomb mix, and then using the palm of my hand to go around the edge of the mold and fill in, uh, press in that, that the mix around the edge. I don't really focus that much on the middle. I mean, yeah, sure, I give the middle like a few little squishes down, but mostly I wanna make sure that the edges are nice and tight. If you're gonna have issues, you know, people sometimes say, how do I keep the edges of my bath bombs from crumbling when I'm doing vacuum form molds? Well, with 3D printed hybrid molds like this, it's gonna be the same principle. So to keep your edges from being crumbly or to keep the um, kind of the sides of it from being soft, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're packing this the edges, right? So the middle is gonna fill in, the middle will be nice and packed, don't worry about that. It's those edges you want to get. Okay, and then whack and spoon, couple of gentle whacks. 
uh, like I said, I didn't have to be like, I didn't have to whack it really hard with this. Like I didn't have to hit it real hard with this mold. I do have some that, you know, they require a little bit more effort. And it also, I think depends on how wet your mix is. So, you know, the wetter your mix is, it's going to stick in there like a suction cup and you're going to have to maybe fight with it a little bit more and tap a little bit harder, but it should be fine. Um, I particularly love this mold. It's super cute. It's very easy to work with. That stem might make you a little bit nervous. So if it makes you a little bit nervous, you can always add a little bit extra mix into that kind of stem area at the edge. But there you go. Oh, well, okay. I didn't exactly show. I'll show you on the next one. I'll show you on the next one though. Okay. So using my palm around the edge, using my thumb around the edge, not, you know, kind of testing it and feeling it. If I push my finger in and I feel like a real soft spot and it gives kind of significantly, then yeah, I will go back and I will um, add a little bit extra mix and then kind of squash that in. But for the most part, I don't need to do that. And then I was showing you, it's not flat. And we want that back to be flat. If that back is not flat, then when I lay the bath bomb on the tray, now it's flat. I use my little scraper and now it's flat. If it's not flat, when I lay that bath bomb onto the tray, oh no, how do I get it out? <laughs> it's a little bit late. We already know. We already know. Your secrets are not secret anymore. Anyway. Um, if I lay the bath bomb onto the tray and the back is not flat, I'm going to have issues with it cracking. It's going to crack. It's going to happen and it's going to crack. So, oh, look how cute and perfect these are. So, yeah, if you're having issues with them cracking, then make sure the back is flat. And for me, it's not enough to just, like flatten the back with my hand. I love to use a scraper. Now, you don't, that little scraper I have is a 3D printed scraper from Inedible Soaps. You do not have to use a fancy scraper like what I'm using. You could totally just use a pastry cutter or a piece of cardboard or a butter knife. You, there's like a gazillion different things that you could use. You don't have to use that little scraper. I just like having a designated scraper. I have a few of those and I use them all the time for all kinds of things. Like <laughs> this is like my multi -tur it is my multi-purpose tool. I need a keychain where I <laughs> and I just have one of those on a keychain like the way dudes have Swiss Army knives. That's what I need because I use that thing for everything. So there I showed you how the mix was all mounded up and by pressing my palm in, I'm able to squash it down quite a lot. So I like my mix to be light and fluffy like that. And then I squash it in with my hand, but I could still, like I could keep squishing it if I wanted to. Just know, okay, back's not even. Just know that the harder you squish it in, the harder you're gonna have to you know, hit it with a spoon to get it to come out. And then, you know, it's not, it's just not always like better, but you do want to make sure that it's packed. I know that people a lot of times like trying to get their bath bombs to float. And so they pack them quote unquote lightly and then their bath bombs just fall apart. So like, that's why number one, I don't care that much about floating, but I do think having a light fluffy mix and then gently pressing it in, it in like that um, is going to help. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying, this, this is what I think. You know, you're here for my opinion. That's what you're going to get. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you would like some more information on how to make bath bombs, you could come visit us at Bath is Info and Bath Bomb and Bubble Bar Support Group. We are a collective group of happy, friendly, nice makers, and we'd love to see you there. You could also come visit us at bathvisandfoam.com. We have a website where we sell some really fantastic recipes, like the low humidity recipe that you saw me using today. We also have color studies, so you could learn how to make a sexy day glow orange like I made if you want. And as always, um, I would like to thank our Patreon donors, our Patreon BFFs. Their names are scrolling across the screen right now for October. Are going to be uh, getting extra little goodies all about painting bath bombs. So I painted this uh, these orange 
uh, jack-o'-lanterns and made them look like they were glowing and they look really really cool and the patreons are going to get a video tutorial on that as well as other video tutorials about how to paint bath bombs so you can come find us on patreon which i will leave a link for that in the description if you enjoyed this video or hey if you didn't you could always leave a thumbs down i'm fine with that too because any attention is good attention as far as youtube is concerned um leave a like and subscribe so you can know when i you know have more content for you but as always, happy making.